What up folks, Alex here, Mr. Alex Tech, and in this video I'm going to show you the quick tips and tricks that I use to create that cool 30 second TV style intro. And I've got a bit of a challenge for you all. I want to see what sort of TV style intro you guys can come up with. Now music is absolutely essential for this. Any good TV show needs an absolutely killer soundtrack. Now the music I used was called Noir and it's by Jameson Nathan Jones and it was provided by Sonata Media who just so happened to be this week's sponsor. They're the new kid on the block when it comes to royalty free music licensing for your videos. And I'm not just talking about YouTube videos but also any commercial projects as well. That goal isn't to bring you the biggest selection of music but instead to deliver a finely tuned hand-picked selection of just top quality music. So they've got the cool, tense, cinematic music like this. Laid back, fun music for your vlogs like this. Or even some silly Christmas music like this. And last but not least, they're affordable, coming in at under $10 per month. That's less than eight quid for us Brit, and that's for an unlimited personal plan. And best of all, they're offering a 30 day free trial so you can go ahead, sign up for 30 days, give it a complete trial, try out all the music, see what you think before committing to doing anything. Also, all of the footage I used in this video was stock footage. There's loads of good quality free stock footage out there. The one I recommend, just head to pexels.com. There's a whole range of stuff on there you can download and start using for free. I also use a gritty overlay towards the end. That is also free and there's a link down in the description to that as well. Right, with all that out of the way, let's get started. So first things first, we're gonna shoot on over to sonata.media. And once you're here, you can start browsing the music straight away without logging in by simply clicking on tracks at the top, or if you want to start your 30 day free trial, just click on the start 30 day free trial in the middle of the screen and you can sign up and get going from there. So now if we just hit tracks at the top, it'll take you to the main page within Sonata Media and we've got a bunch of tracks shown to us straight away. We can listen to them at any point by just hitting play and they'll start playing, or we've got a bunch of filters on the left hand side. Now what I like to do, choose either a genre, a mood or a theme and it starts to just narrow it down and to help you find the track that you're looking for. So genres, we've got everything from acoustic, cinematic to soul and R&B. I wanted something really cinematic for mine so I'm just going to click on cinematic. And then we're also going to choose a mood. Do we want something aggressive, epic or hopeful? I wanted something tense, I went for that zombie sort of feel so I'm going to click on tense and that's just gonna narrow it down to this specific selection. As I say, we can just give them a click to have a listen, and once we're happy, we can just come on over to the right-hand side, click on the little license, subscription, and then we can download the track in either an MP3 or a WAV file, and job done. Now, if you're really stuck for ideas, you don't know what to go for, just browse the catalog, find the track that you really like, and then work backwards from there. Once you've got the music, generally the ideas will start flooding in and everything will fall into place. So here we are within DaVinci Resolve, we're on the edit tab and my first quick tip is just to show you quickly how I set up my timeline and my media pool. So first things first, I'm gonna click on media pool, top left hand corner to open my media pool here. And then I like to add a couple of bins just so that I can stay organized. So underneath master on the left here, just right click anywhere in the empty space, click on new bin, and then you can just create folders for all of your media so that you can stay organized. So I'm just gonna create two. First one's called music. And then the second is simply footage. And then I can import all of my media into the corresponding folders so I know where everything is. So I've imported everything I need. The first thing I want to add to my timeline is my music. Because I'm going to edit to the music, it makes sense just to start off with the music first. So I'm going to grab my music track, just drag it down here, add it to my timeline. Now by default, I've added it to audio track number one but I don't actually want to keep it on audio track one, and I'll show you why. If I was to add some video which had some audio attached, as soon as I was to add it to video track number one, it'd overwrite my music because it's on audio track number one with the audio attached. And that can cause you some big issues further down the line. So instead, what I like to do, grab the music, just drag it down either to audio track two, or you can go a bit further and put it onto audio three, so then it's just out of the way. Now, if I was to add some video with audio attached, my music would be well clear out the way and I won't accidentally overwrite anything. Now, on the subject of audio, if you do import some video which has audio attached and you want to get rid of it really quickly, click on an empty space so that nothing is selected. Then holding the Alt key on your keyboard, click on the audio so it's highlighted in red like so, and then just hit your backspace if you're on Windows or Delete key if you're on Mac 
just to get rid of that audio file without getting rid of the video file. Now my next thing, come down to your audio track with the music on, click on the name itself, that will highlight and then you can just change the name of the track once again. I'm going to go with music and again it just helps you to stay a little bit organized. And then also what I like to do here is to just turn off this auto track selector. With the auto track selector enabled, if you were to just do a random cut here, it'll make a cut through this video, but it will also make the same cut through your music track. And then if I was to delete this with the ripple delete key, it would cut up my music, moving everything along and making everything go out of sync. So if I just undo that, if we untick or disable the auto track selector, if I was to make any cuts in my timeline like so, it won't make the same cut onto the music file unless I specifically select it and try to make the cut on the file. And then it's at this point you can just trim or make any changes to your music as you need to. So I've just got a 30 second section which is what I'm going to be editing to and then we can start to add our video. And here we are. So as you can see, I've added all of my stock footage and I've just done some basic cuts so that it lines up with my music. Now I am generally sticking to basic cuts, but I also like to use cross dissolve transitions. So I'm gonna open up the effects library, come down to video transitions, grab a cross dissolve, and we can just drag that onto the edit point to add a simple cross dissolve transition like so. Now throughout my intro, I want to have that running theme of the time or clock. So I'm just gonna add some additional footage on top. So I'm just going to shoot into my media pool and I'm going to grab this footage of this clock here. And I'm going to put it onto my video track number two above all of my other footage. And then to make it like an overlay so that you can see both pieces of footage, it's really simple. Give it a click so it's highlighted in red. Open up the inspector in the top right hand corner unless it's already open. And then you need to do is come down to where it says composite and then you've got composite mode. Give that a click, there's loads of options in here. Feel free to play around, experiment with them to see which different looks they give you. But I'm just gonna come down to overlay, give that a click, and it's gonna overlay the footage over the top, but you can see both like so. We can then just come down to the opacity, lower the opacity, just to get it looking exactly as I want it. You can then make any changes, you can zoom in, relocate it to get it exactly in the right place. So now we've got the two pieces of footage playing together like so. If you want to take that a step further and to do a gradient fade between the two pieces of footage, that's really easy as well. Give it a click, make sure that your playhead is over it like so, and then we're gonna jump into the color tab. Make sure that you've got your nodes over the right hand side just by clicking on nodes up here. And then just make sure using this little timeline down here that you're on the right piece of footage. So I've got this one here, this little clock piece of footage selected. And then within the nodes, right click in any empty space and add an alpha output. And that'll put this little blue circle over on the right hand side. Then we need to do is grab this little blue square, drag it to the little blue circle, like so. That'll mean that anything that we mask will be transparent so you can see the footage underneath. Then in this little window under here, we want to select the power window. And then we just need to come down here and grab this one, which is the gradient tool. And then on the screen, you've got this sort of T-shape, and then you can just move this wherever you want it, point the arrow, and you can see you can change the gradient of your footage. So if we want a really obvious gradient, or we can have a bit of a line, we can move it as we need it. So I'm gonna have the left-hand side showing more of the clock, and the right-hand side just to be our footage underneath, something like that. You can move it around, and if we jump back into the Edit tab, we've got this faded footage like so. At any point, you can just jump back into the color tab, select that footage, make sure you're on the right node, and then you can make any adjustments to fine tune it to get it looking exactly as you want it. So now we've got our main track with any transitions. We've got our second track with all of our overlays and fades. We can now start to add our titles. So we're gonna open up the effects library. We're gonna come down to titles, and then we're just gonna grab text and add that onto our video track number three. Now, once again, I don't like to do anything fancy with this whatsoever, so I'm just gonna trim this down so it's the right length. We'll zoom into the timeline a little bit. We'll give the text a click so it's highlighted in red. In the inspector, we're gonna to go to the title tab and then we can just add our name in here. So I'm just gonna go with Mr. Alex Tech and then we can change the size and then just move the location wherever we want it. Make sure to select a nice font, like so. 
Now a real great trick here is if you want some of the text to be bold, in the rich text area, if you just select the text that you want to be bold, so I'm going to go with the Alex Tech, make sure it's highlighted and then come down to the font face. I'm going to change that to bold and it will just affect the font which you've got selected within the rich text area. And then you're going to select the mister section and we're going to change that to light. And now we've got this combination of a light mister with a bold Alex Tech. And again, it's just a nice subtle detail, but it really makes the text just look that little bit nicer. Back to our timeline, I want the text to fade out. So what we're going to do, grab this little icon at the end of the text, drag it to the left as far as you want it. And now the text will simply fade out like so. You can then just replicate this by holding Alt on your keyboard, clicking and dragging the text, moving it over to the next section, trim it, make any changes you need to. I'm going to add a fade in as well. Give it a click. We'll change the name for this one to Sonata Media. We can then just change the position. So I'm going to put this one over on the right hand side. We'll make the Sonata bold and the media. I'm going to change that to be light. And there we go. We've got real nice text fading in and out with bold and not bold and it looks really good and then last but not least we're going to add a dust overlay so i've already downloaded the overlay and i've just imported it they're simple mp4 video files so you just import them as any other video we can just grab them out of the media pool and put them above our footage like so so i'm just going to drag this out it's got some audio attached so i'm just going to use my alt trick to give that a click and then get rid of the audio and by default, it's just going to look like this. It's just going to be a completely black screen with the dust on screen. So you can't see anything underneath. Now to change that, again, really simple. Give it a click, open the inspector, come down to the composite mode once again. But this time, we're just going to change it from normal to add. And that will just reveal everything underneath. Now that's a bit strong for me. So again, we're just going to reduce the opacity, get it looking exactly as we want it. And there we go. That's our real simple intro done. And that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this video and I really look forward to seeing what you guys can come up with. Make sure to send me a message, comment below, tag me in your social media posts, whatever. Let me know so I can come over and have a look. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Any thoughts or feedback down in the comment section below. And if you're new here, you enjoyed the video, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Thanks for watching, folks. Take it easy. I'll catch you next time. See ya.